we're just about at the end of the 20 minutes. There's a couple of ways I could chill this. I could, I could just recirc it back into the robo brew till it was 18 and then swap the pump over straight into the fermenter, pump it over. But what I think I'll do, I think I'll just go straight into the fermenter. Uh, I think it'll be okay doing it that way. That's the way I usually do it. Um, if you have a, a chiller that's not very efficient, you know, you can go recirc it back into the robo brew until you're at the right temp and then put it into your uh, fermenter. I'm not really fussed if it comes up a little high or a little low because um, I'm putting it straight in the fermenter fridge and that'll get sorted out in an hour or two. And we're off. I'm going fairly flat chat at the moment. I'll just put the camera down and take a reading and see what temperature we're coming out at. Didn't press record, did I? We're coming out at 25. I've just backed off the wort coming out of the chiller. We'll see what temperature we're coming out now. 21. Maybe I've backed it off too much, I've shut it. <laughs> I could turn it back on. We're coming out at about 19 degrees now. You probably don't know if you can see it from all there, from all the way back there. That's probably not going to make much difference now I pull it up. <laughs> anyway, it's coming out at about 19 degrees, which is fine with me. Oh, it's gone up a bit, 20s, low 20s. I might just go and turn the water up a bit. You can hear my hoses come out of the bucket. Oh. It's very windy today. It's really annoying now I've got this cool work and I keep opening up to test the temperature. Normally I'd just leave it go, but for the video, I'm going to do it. Without getting any dirt and leaves in there. Well, it's coming out at 23 at the moment. 23.4, 23.3. I'm just going to leave it as that because I'm happy I can whack it in the fridge. If you were did want to be a little bit more, um, you could back it off and run it slower. You could try turning your water up stronger. I threw your taps faster, but mine it's not coming out warm, so it means that. I think the chiller on this hot day is probably doing about as best it can. I just backed it off again. I'll, I'll give it a couple of minutes and see if that's going to make a difference. Still coming out about 22. And like to be honest, I don't think our groundwater is any colder than that today. It's 30 degrees here today, and our pipes are really close to the surface. And that's what happens. That's what happens even with my uh, plate chiller. Some days when it's hot, winter it's fine. But in summer it's hard to get it down to the 18 when the when the water isn't even 18. Well, it's impossible. Let's use a pre-chiller or something like that. I've just filled up the second bucket of water, but I am going way faster than I need to, because uh, if the water's coming out cold out the other end, you're going too fast. If it's coming out warm to hot, you know, you're getting a good heat transfer. So that's what makes me think, to, or makes me lets me know too, that my groundwater must be about that temperature. Otherwise, that water would be coming out hot, or this would be coming out a lot cooler. But I'm happy with that. Now, uh, when I keep putting my lid down, it's on a sanitised piece of aluminium foil down there with sanitizer on. That's the last time I'm going to take it down there. Uh, put that around there because it's windy, as I said, and I've got the garage door open a little bit. I don't want stuff blowing in. I'm pretty sure we'll probably come out a little bit short, maybe, from all the hop absorption too. And from this chiller, I don't know how much I'm going to lose in that chiller. Probably at least half a litre to a litre, maybe, in all the piping. About 20, we're getting to 21, 23. Is that the end? That's the end. Alright, turn the pump off. I'm not going to bother emptying out all the, the chiller into it. If you really could if you wanted to. Turn that off. You can lift up the chiller and try and pour it out. But the, I've got my... Uh, I've got 23 litres exactly. 
I'll show you in a minute. I'm just going to go straight in. Um, I'm going to get that hose out first. I had all my hands over the top of there. A little bit of starts in on there again. I'm going to put the yeast straight in. I know I'm a little bit warm, but I know I'm not too warm to kill the yeast. It'll be pretty hot to do that. I'm, I reckon I'm in... Oh, it's feeling quite cool. I reckon I'm probably in the mid-20s, or low-20s, I should say. But my fermenter fridge is great, and it will get this down. No, you can do is reactivate. You can do all that if you like. I think that'll be just fine. You can aerate, you can do all that if you like. Done. Now what? So we're done. And it's 10 past 12, so that's four hours today. A little bit longer because I had a, a longer mash and a half hour worth of uh, steeping. 20 minutes and 10 minutes. So there we are, all ready to go. Let's have a look at the aftermath, eh? It's quite a hot cake there. I can't even see the uh, ring pull that sticks up about an inch. It's a bit hard to probably see from up here, but what a waste. Well, it's not a waste, but you know. Okay, there's a sample. Looking fairly cloudy. The dry hops will add even more. We'll take a reading, see how we went. So that's it. In the end, I came a few points down in the end, but I don't know if some of that might be related to the murky readings I was getting. It's quite a bit of murk. I was trying to, uh, you know, take a reading and probably got junk in there and all sorts of stuff. Um, otherwise, I'm not quite sure about that. And I know I was one point down pre-boil, um, but that, and then a couple more down. But, you know, I'm, I'm still happy. It was uh, 52 or something, 53. I can't remember now. Um, I'll, I'll look into the recipes and adjust because this is the first time I brewed this recipe. I'll look into it and adjust where need be before I upload them on the site. Um, there's a few things I wanted to go through in the recipe because I'll leave the link down for the recipe that I sort of I use for inspiration because um, mine was a bit different. Uh, your water, your water is very important with NIPAs. Saying that, I reckon you can still brew a bloody good one without adjusting your water if you've got good water. Uh, if not, it's a bit hard for me to know to tell you what to use because I don't know what your water is. Um, I added some salts to the mash and a little bit to the boil, but it's, it's hard for me to, to give you advice on that. That's something you've got to look into yourself. Um, what else? Oh, with the fermentation, it says in the recipe to uh, pitch your yeast and start fermentation at 18 degrees and let it rise by itself naturally as fermentation progresses. If I left that out here overnight, it, was, it only got down to um, high 20s last night, I think, here of the night, it would just get too hot. By tomorrow, if it's 30 again, that's not happening. It's Mine's going into the fermenter fridge. And I'll probably ferment it about somewhere between 18.5 and 19 degrees with my USO5. Uh, they're dry hops. That's what I haven't mentioned yet, the dry hops. Uh, it's quite a big dry hop. Um, it is 85 grams of citra, 40 grams of galaxy, and 40 grams of mosaic again. Oh, they say 43. And anyway, I just sort of rounded round it down. Um, they say to split it into three sections and to put in uh, one lot at day two. Um, let's say, first portion gets added after two days of active fermentation. The second 
portion gets added at the end of fermentation and the third portion gets added after three days after fermentation ends. I don't really think that's a good idea for an IPAs because I think you could add a bit of oxidation there. So I'll do what I usually do for my own ones. Um, I'll put the first lot in, it will be about day three, depends how fast the fermentation kicks off. Um, it'll be about probably day three I reckon I'll put mine in at high Krausen when it's start, when it really going off. I, sometimes I'll wait till just after. But anyway, about day three or day four. And my second will be just before it finishes fermenting, which will probably be about day six or something. Um, and then we should be finished by about day 10 or 11 fermenting. Now, yeah, so that would be my, and they say to remove it. And I under, probably understand why they remove it too, because they're leaving it all that long time, where mine won't be in there that long. Um, they say to leave their hops in contact with the beer for two or three days at a time and pull it out. Well, see, if I put mine in, first one in day four, say, um, and the second one in about day six or seven, um, and then leave it for another three days. The first one's only been in for ten, uh, seven days, which is probably about the maximum you want. Uh, and I think that'll be fine. Then I'll crash chill it. And uh, even though you probably don't have to because you want it murky, but I, I don't care about that. I'm going to crash chill it to try and get those hops to settle out for a couple of days and then straight into the keg. I think that's about it. So I'll put a link down the bottom for this original recipe. I'll put a link down for my version. Um, and use, if you want to know about using oats, there's an interesting article I read from Scott Janish, I think his name is. Maybe I pronounced it wrong. I've only read it once or twice his name. I read his articles. Um, I'll put a link down there if it's an interesting uh, article on oats. Um, and probably one of the best ones I've read. Anyway, that's it. Cheers. I'll. Uh, Maybe I'll ch chuck on the tasting of this video at the end, or maybe you'll wait till another video. We'll see how I go. Cheers. Excuse the wind. Oh, <laughs> there it is. Cheers. And I should add, if you're worried about the couple of points being down, I'm not worried about that sort of thing. But if you are, before you flame out, take a reading, see where you are. If you have to boil for another five minutes, 10 minutes to get to where you want to be, do it. You know, you might be a half a litre down or a litre down. I was, I over sparged to start with, so I was under to start with, and I came out, you know, another, so I should have been one point down anyway at the end of the boil, but I came out another two points down under that. But look, I'm fine with that. But if you aren't, boil longer. Or add some decks or some light dry malt to your fermenter afterwards. It's not gonna hurt anything. Cheers. I just thought I'd show you why I couldn't chill. That's cold, cold tap. So we're now 48 hours in, two, hour, uh, two days. It's Thursday afternoon. And the ferment's gone quite well, and I'm going quite warm at uh, 19 degrees. And although it's quite high, I think it's on the way down, or will be very shortly. It's about as high as it's going to go. Um, because I'm fermenting a bit warmer, I was going to wait till day three, but um, I think it might be too late tomorrow afternoon. Well, not too late, but a little bit later than I'd like. So I'm going to put the hops in now on day two, which is 40 grams of Citra and 20 grams of Mosaic, 20 grams of Galaxy. I'm just simply going to answer with the lid and pop them in. Now I think if I had been doing it at my usual 18 degrees, or sometimes when I do it about 18, it would probably take another day. But this is going extremely well, so they're going into today. That smells amazing. So we're on the second dry hop. We're at day five now. It's Sunday. 
So we pitched the yeast and brewed it on the Tuesday, so Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday we did the dry, this first dry hop. Now it's uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a fifth fifth day. Um, the ferment has slowed right down. It's barely bubbling at all. Um, I have uh, the same again: forty grams of Citra, twenty Mosaic, twenty Galaxy. Now I was just going to throw it in the fermenter again, like I normally do. Um, but that's about 160 grams of dry hop and sometimes through my fermenter when I'm filling the keg up I'll get a bit of, a bit, little bit of it through into the keg and usually I'll as I've shown in another video sometimes I'll line the keg with a grain bag or something just to filter out the hops I don't want to do that today I'm trying to totally minimize oxidation so uh, I'm going to put these in a bag and put them in. Bit of an experiment. Um, and I have a a paint uh, a paint strainer bag from Bunnings again, a brand new one. Before I went out for lunch today, I soaked it in some hot water with some sodium bicarbonate. I'll leave a link for that. Get it from Kegland. Use my link. And a little bit of triclinium, the sugar soap just in case there was any oils on it. As I said, it's brand new. Now, that's all I've done so far. Oh, and I, I at the same time I did that, I soaked a couple of stainless steel fittings as a weight to weigh it down. And I stuck my finger in it when I got home to make sure it was clean on the inside of those fittings. Idiot. I twisted my finger and cut it because there's a burr inside it. Don't do that. But anyway, I'm still going to sanitize this. I thought, I'm, I still don't trust, there's a little bit of elastic at the top of this paint bag. I'm going to cut that off. It's probably not necessary, because I'm about to soak this in star sand after just pulling it out of being soaked in uh, the sodium carbonate mix. But I'm still worried about that elastic, so I'm just going to cut that off. Here. They're a good thing, it's what I use, two litre old empty coke bottle. I know that's two litres, filled up to about there. Three mil of star sand, or the equivalent. I don't use star sand. I use the, a cheaper equivalent because star sand is a ripoff. So I'm just gonna coat that star sand. Just let that soak a minute. So I'm just gonna grab this bag. Make sure my hands are sanitized too, which happens when you... So I'm just going to grab this bag, give it a squeeze. I'm going to pour this sanitizer out into another jug. That, that can be kept for, for reuse, it's not dirty or anything. So my hands are sanitized, everything's sanitized. Put the weights in, put those nuts in the bottom. There goes the hops. 40 grams of Citra, 20 grams of Mosaic, 20 grams of Galaxy. I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna tie it. As I said, I was gonna use string, but I've changed my mind because I think there's plenty of room there. There we go. This is what it's looking like now. It's just about done. Here's the hops, I'm just gonna put them straight in. And that sank down, which is exactly what I wanted. So that's that done. So that's in there now. We're day five. I don't want to leave these those in there now. Probably any longer than four days. Five days, you know, five days would be okay. Six days if you have to. We've been at 19 degrees. I'm going to turn up to 20 degrees now. Maybe 20.5 even. No, 20, 20 will do. Or 20.2 would happen to be. Within that four days, that will easily be finished, that beer. I probably should have taken a reading to show you what reading is. But, you know, I've done this a lot of times. I know that that is going to be fine. Uh, if not, 
if it's not done in the four days, what I'm hoping, by which is a total of nine days, um, another couple of days isn't going to hurt. Okay, it's now a week. It's Tuesday again. So it's been seven days since I pitched these. I'm just going to take a reading. I'm hoping uh, that it's done. I'm going to leave for another probably a day or two before I crash for a day, crash chill. Um, I think I'm going to crash chill. I still haven't decided to see when we get there. So I'm just going to take a reading and see where we're at and hopefully we're on uh, target. Well, it certainly looks the part, doesn't it? it smells awesome. Let me taste it. It's good. All right, reading. Well, Beersmith estimated about 11.1011, 1 .1, and I reckon it's probably not showing up on camera. We're just we're there. I don't think we're going to go any lower than that. So everything's on target. It's all uh, looking good. Uh, I'll probably leave it another day or two. I'll decide when I get there. But uh, it looks like we're at final gravity. It won't hurt to leave it another day. I don't want to leave it sitting around too long, this sort of beer. I don't have to wait for it to really clear or anything like that, you know what I mean? But um, I will cold crash it just to try and help drop any hops out that might be in suspension that I don't want in there. Uh, and we'll see how we go. Okay, we are now at Thursday, which is nine days in, um, which I had originally planned. I was gonna rush it a bit, but I decided not to. Um, I'm going to take a quick reading. I took one two days ago, as you probably saw. Um, and I think we'll probably have final gravity then, but I just decided to leave it another couple of days. There was still a bit of yeast, I think you can see in that sample, in suspension. Um, I think it, it, I can see it starting to clear. So we'll take a reading today, and I think I'll just cold crash straight away. And uh, although you couldn't see it, when I first started to take that reading thing, a big lump of yeast come out from the tap, uh, so that proves to me that the yeast has dropped out a lot more than it had from the previous reading. So there we go, and that's looking a lot better. That first one was milky, that was the yeast. You don't want the yeast in there, well I don't anyway in my NLPAs. You want the haste from the, um, the hops and the flaked oats and things. That looks a lot nicer though. Smells pretty good. Oh, it tastes good too, and the bitterness has dropped down than it was the other day. Awesome. We'll take a reading. It's a bit hard to see there where it's actually sitting. It looks a bit uh, higher than on the camera than it does in real life. I'm reckoning that that's about uh, maybe 10, 10 to 11, somewhere around there, nearly 11. It's around there, something like that. Um, and that's exactly where Beersmith had estimated. So, cold crush, here we come. So I'm going to put this down to about 2 degrees to cold crash. Probably only for 48 hours. It depends on your fridge how long it takes to get, to get cold. Some fridges can take a lot longer. You know, it can take a day at least to get down to there. My, this fridge is pretty good for it. Um, so it's Thursday. I'll, either, I'll probably keg it for Saturday morning or something like that. I'll see how it goes. Um, it would have been a good opportunity to put a balloon on the on the um, airlock to catch some CO2 as it's fermenting, and when you crash chill, anything that gets sucked back in will be the CO2. Uh, I haven't done that on this. I probably should have, uh, in retrospect, but I'm sure it'll be fine. 